in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed when nobody knows me God will you lift me yes my son how will it happen not by trying to fake your life it may take time but move with the dignity of honor oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Listen. And I will seek you in the morning. And I have learned to walk in your ways. Four step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step you lead us ah. step by step out of pain step by step out of shame step by step out of mediocrity your mother did not go to school I know but take your mind to the school of destiny and come out of pain. Watch this. Watch this. Come back again, my, my dear people. Let me tell you how God designed this system. Am I, are you learning something this night? May you never forget what I'm teaching you this night. Listen to me. The law of destiny as designed by God is that your future is real. But the first person to get to your future is your mind. Your mind comes to verify whether it's real. When your mind gets there, it will come and say, body, follow me, it's real. Your mind will come and take your body there. Anywhere your mind does not get to, if your body tries to get there, the authorized escort to your body is your mind. The ministry you are claiming to have now has your mind gone with the Holy Spirit to that place. You are CEO only on paper. Is your mind a CEO? You are a man of God only because of the paraphernalia of ministry that is around you. Years ago, I used to know these great guys on campus. These people would never listen and follow the law of process. I mean, they wanted ministry to work now. They wanted TV ministry. They wanted cars. And you know, sometimes we confuse these things with faith. Faith is not foolishness. There are many things that we call faith, respectfully speaking, that is only lost looking for expression. It is not faith. Because if you know God, you will know that there are things to not pray for. Growth. They were already answered in growth. A little baby is born with a womb. Is that true? But that version of that baby cannot carry a child. But the womb is there. A little boy is born with capacity to have children. But not that version of him. The child does not grow and say, body, make sure you get to a point where my wife can take it. No, it's an unnecessary prayer. God's intelligence already provided that as you keep growing, you get to a point, even without being aware, 
that you had gotten to the capacity that will make that happen that's why when you get there and it does not happen you know it's an attack because you know that it should happen effortlessly if your little two-year-old daughter comes to meet you and say mommy why am i not pregnant you see that that very statement tells you her age isn't it it verifies that she's a child but when a woman who is 25 30 and has been married and there's no child then you know a miracle is required because that one is the finger of satan please listen to me don't say i graduated 20 years ago there's no job now don't feel offended with what i'm telling you i came to stretch you a bit tonight we'll pray you have a certificate that is 20 years old but how old is your mind are we together your mind is only attracting to your life what reflects its level when i found this out my life changed i stopped looking for things i grow into things the, any dimension that i have to struggle to enter is proof that i'm not yet there you see one of any of our uncles here and the men of god if you go to the street now look at this and, and i want to say it with all humility i don't mean to boast please understand this if our uncle here goes outside now and you see him buying pure water on the street just one pure water do you know what you will do the law of his growth will force you to say no sir let me buy you table water imagine seeing your general overseer trying to buy a plate of food in a restaurant his level of growth does not allow for that reality in his life again it has nothing to do with humility no the law will force someone to say that it can i have the privilege you call it privilege remember before it was a it was a miracle at this level eating three times a day was a miracle but not at this level so miracles are relative what you are praying for is what someone is is saying oh god this is too much it is growth listen to me every car you have seen when you saw it it saw you too it passed because it's not your own yet the office you will later walk in saw you when you saw it but it's not looking for that version of you when you watch television and you saw certain leaders standing and you imagine you standing you were not wrong but not that version of you as a man of god god showed you where you will go in the dream but it has not come physically because your mind has not arrived there anywhere you go by the spirit with your mind your body must get there there is no tribal sentiment there is no political affiliation there is no prejudice there is no whatever it is please comfort yourself everything you see today don't be under pressure if at this level you are still soaking gary it's not proof that your faith is not working it is the law of process do it with honor and dignity while your body is eating gary let your mind be eating with kings while you are in one room let your mind be building the estate while your body is teaching five members let your mind be building the campground will your mind build a campground your body will not enter while you are in hundred level just wondering and say oh this course don't worry let your mind be collecting the phd for you your mind is attending a convocation ceremony of a doctor whereas you are here wondering will i pass this course for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days do you know the purpose of dreams and visions the purpose of dreams and visions is not just to prove you are prophetic dreams and visions are spiritual strategies where the holy spirit takes your mind to your destiny so that you will see it and returns you back and then your body follows 
some of you seated here right now you've seen yourself on this stage is that true you've seen yourself ministering you got up and you casted it don't cast it it's not a lie but not this version of you the version of you now will not preach on this stage except you are acting drama but in reality it may not preach here it doesn't mean you are not called so while you stay in the secret place while you are studying and fasting nobody is seeing you but you are coming closer to the pulpit a day will come the justice of god will fish you out of a thousand people it is true it's unnecessary to call the world to see you a system has been designed to make those who are ready seen to be seen this is it this is what god taught me many years ago i would stay and study my bible and see visions of the nations and i said lord i believe you i believe you my background notwithstanding the limitations notwithstanding do you know i travel today to places and sometimes when i stand there i begin to i almost fight tears because i saw those places years ago but that version of me as born again as it was could not come there please my precious people hear what i teach you and it will explain why many people are not moving forward because our minds froze and it's only our bodies that are moving the healer you saw is real grow into it the one feeding nations you saw is real grow into it hear me my dear sister the woman of god that you saw in your dream you saw the wives of many jews in this nation and you saw yourself in their midst it's not a lie it's a call of destiny but that version of you will never sit down with the great a day came i had a dream many years ago there were ministers gathered together and i was on stage eating i no, i was somewhere scattered and papa Ia deboye looked at me and spotted me he said come and when i was coming people were frowning what is this small boy coming to do baba is calling what should this boy be doing and then when i got there he was eating on the stage he said kneel down and eat i said no i can't i can't do this i mean i was well trained ah i would not try this he said i'm the one who is telling you eat imagine that i got up and went to redemption camp and i say i'm a man of god i have a track record of sick bodies being healed and all of that and uh, sir i saw you in the dream and because of that where is your dining table how stupid the spirit of god took my mind there to say if you walk with me this will be your destiny many people have seen things in their dreams and died and never got there because their minds remained in their yesterday even if your body goes to tomorrow is where your mind is that is really where you are if you are in tomorrow and your mind is in yesterday you are in yesterday lay hands on your head in one minute and for the next one minute pray in tongues and say in the name of jesus my understanding move forward my knowledge of god my knowledge of life my knowledge of destiny is someone praying pray That man of God that I saw in my visions is the Holy Spirit taking me to destiny. I will get there. That woman of the Spirit that I saw, that healing evangelist that I saw, now I believe, now I know. That worshiper that I saw taking the songs of the Spirit to the nations, you may despise this version of me, but there is a version of me that creation cannot ignore. hallelujah praise the lord sit down thank you gentlemen god bless you do you understand what i just taught you so number one
to measure success your spiritual health number two your level of transformation i am passionate about knowledge not random knowledge not every knowledge you must before you receive knowledge find out what allocation is given to it in terms of the problems it must solve in your destiny there are many spiritual information that are useless to the saints it is pride and carnality that continues to drive people into a body of knowledge that has no applicability to their lives and destiny just because an information is scarce or spiritual or true does not mean it is needed when you are a student and you are studying medicine, you may never visit the faculty of arts for anything. Correct? Now, that does not mean the body of knowledge there is wrong. It means as far as the course you are pursuing is concerned, knowledge there is unnecessary. If you go every day to take lectures, for instance, in theater arts, it's wonderful if you are an artist. But if you are a doctor, it, it does not matter. So we have random accumulating of spiritual knowledge. We just go online and any topic. We have so many things. And that vacillation of knowledge puffs us up to mean that because we have several knowledge, we are wise. But our results show we are not. We must trust God for guided knowledge. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, Jesus speaking, he said he will guide you. Truth is something that you must get with guidance. Number three, let me hurry up. I guess I'll preach my tonight's message tomorrow. The third platform to measure success is your health and your physical well-being. It looks very simple, but please pay attention. A body has thou prepared for me, not just a spirit, a body. This body must be prepared to impact a generation. A body has thou prepared. The church is not called the spirit of Christ. The church is called the body of Christ. Satan knew the value of bodies. Even when Moses died, he wanted his body. Bodies are important. Your body is your only legal access to operate in this realm. If you do not have a body or if you lose your body, it's more than just being healthy. You have lost your right to function within this domain that's the reason why satan exits men prematurely by doing something to their body when you have an accident god forbid and please i'm not getting you emotional but when you have an accident there is a way that accident can deteriorate your body your spirit will no longer stay there and it will have to leave is that true there is a way that your health will break down to a point that your spirit will have to leave so the spirit does not just stay in the body generically there is a a threshold level of health that can allow it to stay there so when you say i shall not die but leave that means you are saying god does not do, uh, i mean um your word says that i shall not die but leave and this body needs to be preserved when Jesus spoke about worry and stress, he knew what he was saying. It was a system of preserving your body so that you will last. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If I died this morning, I will not be here now. Are you aware that you need to be alive to make an impact? And that to be alive is not just a spiritual issue alone. Your body, it is very important. A body has thou prepared for me. You must commit yourself to being healthy the same way you are committing yourself to being spiritual. It's a commitment you must trust God to make. Say amen. Number four, the fourth platform to measure success is in the area of finances. You're excelling financially. Every time I come around the West, I marvel at the spirit of faith and the grace for territory that is upon this region. When I came in here, I've been here a few times, but it never, it never ceases to dumbfound me. You don't have these kinds of facilities to this degree in the North like that. 
to have one church, one ministry, own estates, own properties. Let me tell you, you've heard me say that the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set them free. Let all the nations come and see, but we have to lift up that name. Whoever tells you to ignore your finances in destiny is the one that has destroyed your life. Listen, being successful financially is not an issue of being rich. It's an issue of redeeming time. Money has nothing to do, it's not the issue of prosperity for the ego. The Bible commands us to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time is to have the resources to minimize wastage. Poverty is not about lack of money. It's about the servitude of your time. The highest thing you have in your life is time. Whatever can help you redeem time is an advantage. Listen to me. I will continue to preach this. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Say hunger. Hunger is the only thing that takes Israel to Egypt. Let me show you a scripture. Never forget it. Genesis 42. Is it projected up here? I'm not sure it is. I just wanted to know if they are... Okay. If it will be projected, I want us to see it if you can really see. Genesis chapter 42. We'll read the first two verses. Otherwise, you just look at your Bible. The Bible talks about Jacob. If you can see it, read it with me. One to read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Everybody say corn in Egypt. There was corn, but the problem was the location. That's not the place to be in, but there's corn there. Then the Bible says, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. Verse 2 now. And he said, Behold, uh -huh, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet without corn will still die. Jacob was a prophet, but he said, now we are hungry, we need corn. And Satan programmed the location of corn to be where? Egypt. So you may stand and know God and love God. You may be a prayer warrior. Until there is a need for your son's school fees. That hunger will start taking you from the secret place to Egypt. Believers must be empowered. But they must be empowered properly. When people understand that this subject of wealth. Has nothing to do with just being rich. To prove to everybody that I'm poor. That's too small a reason for it. It is a strategy for time redemption. The Bible says the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. It took wealth to make this happen today. Jesus is being glorified in this place, not only on the wings of faith, but on the wings of resources. We are able to amplify this voice to you and to the nations today. When God blesses you, it takes away the temptation of, of the funny things that people do around the pulpit. Is it not when you are hungry that you would think of cheating someone on, on his food? Listen to me. God wants you to be wealthy, but the key is that you prosper even as your soul prospers. That's what Satan does not want. You will have to exchange your soul. So he said, what shall it profit a man? Profit. He's speaking business now. If he gains the whole world and what? Loses his soul. You know you are prospering by your world when your soul is dying while your wealth is growing. When you meet God, he will cause both your soul and your wealth to grow. 
if your soul is growing and your wealth is not growing the problem is ignorance if your wealth is growing and your soul is not growing the problem is fraternity with this age but if your soul is growing and your wealth is growing is proof that God is the one who is lifting you the second reason why you need wealth in your life if I would say very quickly is because the Bible makes a very interesting statement that God revealed to me recently am I wasting your time Jesus please hear me if you're a minister of the gospel please hear me because this is the strategy the devil wants to use and embarrass people these days notice that Jesus went about preaching the moment Jesus started preaching those who came to him were tax collectors they came to disgrace him and they said you are preaching and you are not paying tax in other words you are not leaving your word they knew that they would not find him with women they would not find him with anything they came with the issue of resources and Jesus said paraphrasing what is this embarrassment for now he said well anyway go to the fish catch that fish remove coin from it and when you remove coin from it give the man and let him go and then he says blessed are the peacemakers do you know what is the reward of a peacemaker he says they shall what watch this peace i give you jesus is speaking my peace i give not as the world gives do you know how he gives us peace he showed us the formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god what belongs to god so when you hold a bible and you are serving god caesar will come for his coins every time you are lifting your voice to worship god caesar will come as bills caesar will come as school fees caesar will come as house project and he says the way i give peace is that i give you both a bible and a coin so that while you are worshiping me when caesar comes you give him his coin and let him go are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes sir. so while you are worshiping and lifting up the name of the lord here comes the landlord where is that stupid pastor i'm here with police to close your church and he says the way the way i give my peace is that while you are giving God what belongs to God I know Caesar will come the tribute collectors will come so there is a provision in my economy to make sure Caesar's coin is on your hand while you are worshiping so that while he comes you give to Caesar that way you are a peacemaker hear me one of the greatest reasons why believers in this country today are turning away from the things of God it's not fornication believe me when I tell you this it's not just immorality in terms of you know compromise with their bodies but the tribute collectors are coming to interrupt your worship so you stand to worship ah. we lift our hands to the great I am who was and who is and is and here comes your bill to interrupt your worship hey this is the pta letter your twins they've increased the school fees from hundred thousand to 150 and suddenly hold on please your worship becomes doubt and fear god are you still there you gave God what belonged to God, but you could not give Caesar what belonged to Caesar. And Caesar will stand there to embarrass you. I'm praying for somebody. May God satisfy you early with his mercy in life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Ba, it takes time to know God. It takes time to learn the ways of God. It takes time to impact a generation. It takes time to pray. You pray five hours every day. Poor, won't you fail? 
one day your wife will look at you and say what kind of man did i marry you'll be surprised you will not be able to pray again so god says i want your time but caesar also wants his coin and so you have to use your time and share it both for god and for caesar so god empowers you are we together i have seen what stress can do to men i've seen what stress can do to churches i've seen what financial stress can do to people the devil will come to tempt you with something you will reject it he will amplify the stress and come again and say i'm still here in case an ungodly man came and said marry me and i will change your life financially he said no 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 no. god already revealed to me that i'm going to serve him he will increase the stress it's your mother by yourself that will call you and say let me warn you if you bring anybody in this house that doesn't look like where we are going so no matter what god told you that stress will, there are many people in homes today that they should not be money took them there there are many marriages that should not have scattered money what guns could not do money scattered it poverty is a dangerous thing it's not about prosperity talk my brothers and sisters it's a strategy to destroy the saints some of you you are seated here right now only god knows when your school fees where your school fees is going to come from you are a student yet you are sending money home so when they gave you a fellowship leadership you could not receive it yet you are anointed and you know you should be serving there but the stress on you cannot allow you but things are changing things are changing i pleaded with god i said i will never pastor and raise a people who are just spiritual and do not have the requisite level of financial influence it is dangerous to work with people the tendencies that come out of a man's heart when he's in financial difficulty only god can help the best of us can become a beast under financial stress that's why the psalmist says satisfy me early with your mercy satisfy me early when you build your house at 70 years it's not a testimony that's mercy There is a spirit in Africa that we must destroy. It is the spirit of lateness. Are we together? Please hear me. If you meet a young, vibrant person, how old are you? I am 22 years. And you are already a preacher? Yes, sir. A master's holder? Yes, sir. Married? Yes, sir. This car is your own? Yes, sir this house is your own yes they say you must be a thief now please understand this now it is true that there is the law of process but there is a spirit we must destroy because what god is making out of you will make everyone around you a, a they will marvel and say i knew you now was it not you that i saw last year listen when you build a house at 60 i'm speaking respectfully people say oh that's good that means it's proper it's supposed to be like that when you use your pension to pay your child's school fees they say correct that's the way it's all right we're all humans you see those kinds of wise sayings those statements look like they are nice but they are demonic things at age 33 jesus had finished his assignment 33 he turned the world upside down by 33 he was done i have fought the, i have i have um how, how did he say it? it is finished 33 for someone at 33 you are not even born again are you seeing now and it takes time to know god at age 12 jesus was at the temple the, the doctors of the law if they had their way they would drive him you are too small to know god wait until you are 30 it's a spirit 
when you see a brilliant child at 15 who is doing well people say eh, he's too young just allow him first until that spirit makes him dull and at 40 he's still finding out his left from his right i speak to you by the god of heaven the grace that can give people speed in life may it come upon you hallelujah you see a man of 60 years 70 years and a small boy of 12 years and you see the labor the man is shaking already he's sick but he has to pay the child's primary school fees what sort of life is that because of this difficulty an average graduate in nigeria may not get a good job for the next 10 years after graduation and when you meet people they say it's all right it's, well, are you not seeing me it's like that you are even lucky that your own is after 10 years you got something small in as much as i sympathize with these things it's a spirit that what you don't confront you will never conquer are we together the moment you see certain young people doing something great, they will say you're either a musician, a secular musician, or a uh, uh, footballer, thank you, a sportsman. You mean someone born again who knows God cannot hurry up in life? Is it a curse? Joash was king at age eight. Josiah was king at age nine. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny you lead me and guide me to the city up above you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny listen some of you the time you should be born again you were not born again a man that gets born again at 40 you don't need advancement alone you need restoration because already the time has gone you give yourself another five to ten years to know god and to grow and to be mentored and then to understand the laws of life to succeed you will succeed at 70 so he says i can restore years that canker worm not situations, canker worm, palma worm, caterpillar. Are we together? Yes. Imagine what will happen to your children by the time they are five years with the knowledge you have now. They will first get born again at two years. Filled with the Holy Spirit at two years. Are we together? By age seven, what you learned at 15, they already know by 13 they've started their destiny because while they're in the womb you will find out from god what is my child going to become you will not let him discover it after 35 years of an experience like cain meandering destiny before you now find out that you were called you joined police you worked in the bank you worked as 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 um, whatever it is all of this you were finding fulfillment before finally god said how long will it take you to know i called you it is powerful to find god early those who seek me early there is a timing to it not all times are convenient this is why you must appreciate the opportunity you are given by this great ministry to mentor and invest jesus into you at this level yes nobody outgrows the need to be guided 
Let me give the last one. The last index that measures success is relationships. Now pay attention to this one. You are as successful as your relationships. Our world is yet to understand the power embedded in relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Please follow me. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. You got saved because of a relationship. You are in school today because of your relationship with a lecturer and you are learning. It is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to progress your knowledge. When God wants to honor you, he will bring quality relationships. Everybody say quality relationships. Now the paradox is if you have too many friends, it's a sign that you don't have values. You need few friends and many relationships. <laughs> relationships don't have to subscribe to your value system. They are just connections. A destiny helper may be hedonistic and may be used by God momentarily, but a friend must subscribe to your value systems. If you have many friends in your life, it's a sign that your standards are weak. Weak enough for anyone to be your friend. But you need relationships. Please look at me. You are as blessed as your relationships. I am here standing on your campground because of relationships. A baby comes to the earth because of relationship. You are not successful if you do not have relationships. The clearest proof of favor is not money. It's the loyalty and the hearts of men. When God gives a generation to hear you, you are favored. Is God speaking to us? You need advantageous relationships. There are men who may not have money today, but they don't have a need. Because their receipt rights paid for through relationships, not cash. Paid for through relationships. There are people today who are looking for money to build houses. There are people today whose relationships have become an investment. Listen to me. You need quality relationships. Quality relationships in your life. That means you must understand the laws of relationships. The Bible says he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. You must understand the law of honor. You must understand that the psychological need of any man and every man on earth is the need to be loved, the need to be valued, and the need to be appreciated. This must be at the back of your mind while you treat people. If you insult and violate this law, you will never rise. The law of honor, you've heard me say it. Second only to the law of encounter is one of the most powerful spiritual laws that I've had. I can begin to tell you stories today because of this. When we got to the redemption camp, thank God for a Pastor Sam and a few of the people. And I was so honored at the priority that they gave us and everything. They made it a big deal, my being there. And I looked at the people. I would have stupidly stood there and said, oh, they now acknowledge Joshua Selman. But you understand relationships. People forget what you tell them, but they don't forget how you made them feel. They are like elephants on that. They will remember after 30 years. And they are unforgiving about it. If I come and stand here and I insult this church, insult your leaders, and make it look like everybody is unserious, I may never come here again. Let me show you why doors open once and never open again. One single law, dishonor. We do not understand the capacity to discern. Listen, gentlemen and ladies, hear me. It's true that you can fail a course and honor can upgrade your score. The lecturer can call you. Yes, you failed. Yes, sir, I did. Honestly, sir, I've been, I, I'm not a lazy student, but I have a lot of family challenges and stress. Ah, what is this ticker on you? You're a member of this church. Are you a smart person? He will ask you a question in passing, and you answer, and you will say go. The final year result will come out, 
and you see you've graduated honor upgraded your score but another arrogant student will come there and say it's my right please i am not stupid i know my right and the lecturer will look at him and say you will stay here for the next four years please learn the things that i teach you success is a system it's a system that you engage i had the privilege of meeting our father before coming here and what warm reception he gave and i was very careful to make sure that i honored him sincerely your leaders here have honored me with all my heart they have they have gone out of their way to demonstrate honor is the reason why every time they invite me no matter in fact it's as if the protocol department already has they just find out the date and keep their dates no matter what happens they keep it there if it's four square don't come their way honor preserved it like that listen listen learn what i teach you tonight and you will play life like a chess many people will say you are lucky but you know what you are doing you know a few people see me and say ah apostle god is lifting you you are fortunate and i say oh boy when you rise by knowledge you don't fear where you are going because knowledge took you there to keep you wisdom and knowledge the bible says will be the stability of your times is god speaking to someone yes, success imagine what happens to you when you are on fire spiritually imagine what happens to you when you are enlightened intellectually that the scope of your relevance is not just the pulpit don't drop the mic and look useless until sunday be able to be relevant to a civilization and david served his own generation with excellence and intelligence and understanding imagine that you are healthy and strong strong enough to see your children's children imagine that you are blessed enough to not think of money but focus on god and his purposes and imagine that you have the privilege to have quality relationships that become keys that open doors for you that man is a success i said that man is a success show me a man who is only spiritually alive he may have an advantage but in this life he will pay for it show me a man who ignores god but is intellectually sound he will go so far but he will end up looking like his past show me a man who has a healthy body who dissipates energy eating well adorning the physical body and forgetting god and forgetting his mind I show you a man who will continue to flatter himself around a circle and remain there. Show me a man who all he's pursuing is money without this four. I show you a man who has found a job that will never pay him salary. The pursuit for money without these things. Show me a man who all he has is earthly relationships. He will now know that men are men. They will say, you are our king today and they will say crucify him tomorrow the same men men will clap you today and stone you tomorrow and say remember i was the one who clapped yesterday i've changed my mind so when you want to be balanced this message i am teaching you that you are receiving in one session is somebody's lifetime testimony this is pain that someone spent his lifetime learning compressed in one encounter is why it is good to come to church i was glad when they said unto me the church is not a nuisance to society does what i have done to you tonight in this few minutes i have redeemed your time now you know what to focus on ah so success is not what i seek i attract by who i'm becoming so you focus on your destiny while everything gravitates towards you imagine if years ago i kept praying for square i must stand on your altar this is my desire it's a foolish prayer it's unnecessary growth already answered that prayer for i spoke a word you were singing over me 
You have been so, so good to me. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, hear me. We are going to pray shortly. There is nobody you see that you desire and you admire. They look like mysteries because of what you do not know. Growth is a system. Growth is a system. The difference between you today and our great fathers of faith, the difference between you today and a Benny Hinn, the difference between you today and a Maurice Sorulo, the difference between you today and a Dangote and Otedola, the difference is these systems. That means I may come from a background weak, beaten by life, but I can begin to rise like you are rising one step after the other for now you are paying attention to your spiritual life don't worry let me tell you this as i prepare for us to pray i apologize i know our time is gone years ago when we started with god on campus it would be stupid at that level to start teaching on money and start teaching on family life is unnecessary there are levels in your life where the only thing that should be your message is God. Fire. How to fast. How to know God. How to study scripture. Are we together? If you are in that fellowship and you are turning and looking at a sister, you are really carnal because your mind should not even go there. Your assignment should be in the beginning God. You come with fire. That's the time you have the strength to pray. You can look for one holiday time and spend three days dry because the glory of the young is their strength. You will not always have that time, I guarantee you. Today, right now, having a retreat is time I must beg God and have luxury for. It was from Mina to a conference in Kaduna here and then I'm back. I think all through this year, Maybe aside from the election period, I've not had eight to nine days at home this year. Whereas there were days I was as free as nothing. If I did not redeem those days, these days would not come. It's God speaking to someone. Now you have the time. Some of you, as young as you are, you are snoring away your destiny. Your father is sleeping, you are sleeping too. Your mentor is sleeping, you are sleeping too. That's the time to wake up and say, I will sleep in the future. But for now, Zakatoska Parakata. They say, this fasting, won't it kill you? You say, no. There's money in the future that I will eat well from. But for now, God reveal yourself to me. God says you are going to be an evangelist. And you, you get the map of the world in a paper and every night you are laying your hands on it. The nation so God. Today, I get very surprised. Young people just start with God and the next thing, they are, they, you come for fellowship as you are answering altar call. You are already looking at a sister. You are already looking at a brother. You're, you see, oh, this kind of, this, this upside down pathway is why people don't grow. Please hear what I'm teaching you. Are we together? Ask anybody. Our fathers would tell you. When they started, they did not know male and female. They only knew God. It was even God that had to tap them one day while they are praying and say, hey, hey, hey relax. Father the nations, mm -mm. that's your wife. Okay, God, I've seen, but mm -mm. I'm not answering you again. Turn, go and meet her. Can you be so focused on destiny? Some of us like money to an extent. That's all you dream of. That's all. No, 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 no. Take it step by step. You are in 100 level, you are in every club, you are in every association, you are in every society, you are in every group, whether it's occultic or whatever. You think you are social. Any man of vision does not have that luxury of time. You must choose the things that are needful. Your academics, God, and then fellowship. That's how visionary people start. As you adjust, you will now have time for other things. Please reprioritize your destiny this night. There are groups to resign from quickly. There are clubs and associations that your pocket money is 5,000 or 10,000. The due for that club is 2,000. 
You are the only one who is a student in that club. Resign this night. And settle down with God. Every night, challenge yourself. Whether it is raining or not, get up to your secret place. You are weak, but you are praying. Heaven is watching. My son, continue. This is the overseer of the ministry that will mentor the children. You are praying. You are a young lady here. Every night, Lord, that I will know you. And God says, this woman, this is the only kind of man that can marry her. The kind of anointing this lady is working on is not somebody who is loitering around. No, this womb should bring a prophet, not a human being. Are we together now? Yes. This is how we rose. Ask anybody who has risen here. A time must come in your life when you will not have time for anything again except God. There are people who graduated. I'm not saying to do it. But there are people who graduated and because they got born again late, they allocated one year to seek God alone. Alone. No nothing to catch up. And those people are on fire. They are blessed today. There are others who have been busy since they were young. Till now they have not done anything. You can choose where you want to be. I make up my mind to be balanced. I will know him and serve him all my days until I see him. It's a vow and a commitment I've made in life and in death. I love him more than anything. Ask him. He's won my heart. That's, that's for sure. I will never be offended in him. Number two, I made up my mind that I would not stand before anybody on earth who will look at me as a nuisance. Whether you are a politician, whether you are an atheist, whether you are a hedonistic person, I don't care. I should be able to present God with a level of intelligence that will make you know that Christianity is a blessing, not a nuisance. And since I found out my background did not provide for that advantage, I outsourced it through passion. Sit down, buy the truth. Buy the truth. Don't give excuses. Buy the truth. Don't buy clothes. Not weave on. Buy books. Buy tapes. Sit down. One trouser. Yes, sir. Feed your mind. Please be careful. Don't say I'm a man of God. Everybody knows me. I need to start dressing well. Who knows you? Who told you? Settle down. All my scholarships as a student. All my scholarships. All there was not one that was spent for me for my personal no not at all it was books and books I had a small rechargeable every night I would sleep I would I bought this compendium of Bible on tapes Strong's Concordance Dake's Bible all of these books the whole series Kenyon Hagin the fathers of faith in this nation I gathered them like this you would think that I want to build a museum because the vision I saw that version of me will be joking to believe God will take it there as I leave this place right now after the grace you go to my room there you will find my laptop there are already things to study I'm not going back this night and go and sleep and say oh, I have a session tomorrow that level of laziness cannot look let me tell you it takes stamina to stand on some dimensions it's not just anointing generically the anointing needs a vessel to rest on i'm showing you the labor dimension i i'm sorry i did not really get into my topic today we have a session tomorrow but this there is a price for uncommon impact ask my people did you know that as close as I am to all these guys, the team that travels with me, I never really have time one-on-one -on -one with them. They also themselves, as close as they are, they look forward to times when I'm free so that they can now ask their own questions. When we go inside there now, they may not see me again till tomorrow. Act like you have not achieved anything in life. Act like nobody has known you. Act like your name has not gone anywhere. Don't plateau at a level. No, sir. Champions don't stop. The only thing that stops them is death. Champions never arrive. 
Apostle Joshua Selman, you are a man of power. You are a man of miracles. To what degree? To what degree? If you pray for 100 barren women and 10 get healed, 10 over 100, what grade is that, students? Talk to me. So if you pride yourself and say, oh, I'm a healer, based on what? Listen, let me tell you, there are dimensions that kings will not come to you. You have to press. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. It's Gentiles that come to your light. There is no amount of tiredness that sustains the power to distract me. If I miss out on my prayer time, I have a system of discipline on myself to make it back. Is it all right that I'm, I'm a bit open with you like this? Because many people, we, we like results. Behind results, there is a price you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. Oh God, use me. Let me bless the nations. I agree. But my brothers and my sisters, you need to build stamina. The remnant of the house of Jacob will bear root downwards and then will bear fruit upwards. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. Tomorrow I'll touch on the topic that I came with. But hear me. <laughs> you're complaining already <laughs> no 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 we have to <laughs> you want a vigil we'll not do it no 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 we have to be fair i know you are motivated by what i'm saying but you have to sleep listen my, my dear ones listen to me listen to me listen we are going to hear me hear me we are going to pray Tonight, I know that I just shared with you a few things to challenge you. Tonight is inspiration and motivation. Why? Because many of us are at points in our lives and our destinies where if you get it right now, you have gotten it right forever. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp down your growth. We are trusting God for a generation in Foursquare that would be so young men who are extremely anointed and successful, not anointed and struggling. Hmm. That a day in the nearest future will come in Foursquare here where it is, it will be a gathering of kings. You will see someone doing ushering, you will think it's because he's not employed until you see the company he runs. And when it's time to pray, he's rolling on the ground. That in itself is a sermon to someone who doesn't love God. I vow to myself that I will never lead weak people. It is dangerous to lead weak people. My greatly revered mentor who had gone to be with the Lord, bless his soul, Dr. Miles Munro, he shared and he said, a true leader does not maintain followers. He turns followers to leaders and leaders to agents of change. Listen to me. Seated in this place right now are the prophets of the next season. Seated in this place right now are the apostles of the next season. You have seen it in your dreams. I'm not telling you what you don't know. Seated here at the next Reinhard Bonkers. Reinhard Bonkers is already on his way. That belong to a generation. But are you ready for it? Or will it pass you and look for someone else? Did you know Bible students that the first person God called was not Abraham? Abraham's destiny was his father's. Read your Bible. The person who was called was terror. And he missed out on it. And the mandate shifted to Abraham. Who would later become Abraham the father of nations. No one will take my place in destiny. No. No shadow you will light up. 
mounting you and him coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you will light up mountain you will coming after me oh the young never ending reckless love of god Oh, he chases me down Leaving 99 I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Oh, the overwhelming Can we spend five minutes to pray? I'm going to allow you, I will call and then give us a few prayer points. But in the next two minutes, I want to leave everybody in this campground with God alone. For the next two minutes, find a corner and cry, Lord, I will not fail destiny. There are men and women tied to my grace. Is there someone who can cry to God? Ah! Come on, four square. Cry to the God of heaven. Let me encounter destiny. No shadow you will light up. Coming after me. No mountain you will kick down. Coming after me. I will not fail destiny, oh God. You have called me to be a prophet to the nations. I may not look like it, but let tonight be like the threshing floor of Naboth. Sisters, pray. Where are the Catherine Kumans that must arise? Where are the Emmy Semple McPhersons? Eli is calling Samuel. Where are you? Pray, pray, pray tonight. Lord, pour out your spirit. Is there someone praying? Oh no. The people of the earth. Ah. Let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secret of your heart Lord, our world is waiting. Let creation see the coming of your name. There's gonna be a great awakening. 
Hey, there's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Cry to the Lord. Pray. I surrender all to you everything I give to you I'm withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing yeah. withholding nothing Will you give your heart away? Yeah. Will you give your heart away so he can use you? Will you give your time away? Will you give your time away? And I, I'm desperate for you. Few minutes and we're done tonight. Hey. And I, I'm lost without you. Lift up a cry. Lord, I will not fail destiny. There are generations tied to my grace. There are generations tied to my obedience. People will not go to hell because I failed. Creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Ladies, pray. Gentlemen, pray. I may be the first from my family, but here I come. Here I come in the name of the Lord God of heaven. Please pray. Please pray. A few minutes and we're done. You're not wasting your time. You are negotiating with destiny. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I see You are my only all I'm seeking you as a precious joy Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my only all Sing Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. hallelujah now I want you to mention the five areas that I lifted and pray them into your life Christ must be represented in this area spiritually fresh fire mentally I will be transformed enough to draw to my life the kind of kingdom influence that is desired to lift the name of Jesus I live long and strong this body is a gift from God to me 
I will not destroy my body with drunkenness. Are you praying? I will not destroy my body with anything that can tear me down. Adultery, fornication, drunkenness. This body is a gift and the only host that can keep my spirit alive here. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Yes, you are God and you reign forever and ever. You are the Lord of signs. Yes, you are God and you reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't be tired. Bear with me. The Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, Let us lay aside. Is someone ready to pray? Father, whatever will make me lose in destiny, cut it away this night. Let there be a circumcision. If it's a wrong relationship, let it live my life. If it's an addiction, let it be broken by the grace of God. Someone serious with your destiny, cry. If it's anger, let it live my life. If it's laziness, it must live my destiny. I'm ready to get to the place of destiny. No price is too great. Habarato shalakarato skabaria. Hallelujah. 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 Hopefully my session, there's no time to minister to people now and pray for the sick. Tomorrow we'll leave that for the morning. I'll minister, prophesy over your life. We still have a session so that I'll allow you sleep. But there's just one last prayer. We'll pray to round this. Father, the kind of hunger that will attract the mantle for a generation listen to me please not a mantle for a congregation not a mantle for a parish lord the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave her in her bunker. the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave the generals let that baptism happen to me now if someone praying lift your voice and cry for everyone that ask it, receive it. Someone you are praying for a generational mantle. The kind of hunger, oh God, that money cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that fame cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that the achievement in life cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that the applause of men cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that even my results cannot satisfy. Someone is crying. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Lord, I know I'm a prophet. I have prophesied, but I'm not satisfied. Greater hunger. I'm an apostle, but greater hunger. I'm a first class student, and I'm grateful for it. But I cry for something greater, oh God. I'm already in ministry. I prayed for a woman the other day, and she had a miracle, but I'm not satisfied. Give me something for a generation, oh God. Please pray, pray. 
take away spiritual mediocrity the hunger for a generation lord they call me great but i need a real mantle from heaven i want to represent god to a generation not just a church minutes and we're done two minutes of a heartfelt cry four square are you praying god is searching men looking for men in this end time lord i thank you for my result in ministry but i'm tired of this level tired of this level thank you for my results in business but i'm tired of this level as a campus fellowship president as a prayer secretary as a Bible study secretary, as a, as a zonal leader, thank you for where you have taken me. But I refuse to let you go tonight. You must place something upon my destiny that is generational. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we wait on you for fire. Lord, we wait on you. Hallelujah. Please listen. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be, I will share with you a few things, but tomorrow's meeting will be an impartation. There has to be a transfer. Some of you, what you saw in your dreams, what you have seen in your visions for many years, it's time for something to come upon your life that a generation will know that the hand of God is upon you. So while you go back to eat and to sleep, don't be carried away and start gisting and talking as if you are not in the presence of God. Spiritualize your mind. As you go eat, just exchange pleasantries, go to bed. Wake up with a hunger tomorrow and write it that today is the day. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.